how well do you know your major scale guitar patterns? Are you just looking into learning them for the first time? If so, good for you. Or have you been playing guitar for a while, but you still haven't solidified being able to play in any key anywhere up and down the fretboard? This lesson will show you the five major scale guitar patterns so you can play in any key anywhere on the neck. Saying scale patterns is very common, but these are also called scale forms or scale positions or scale shapes. Those are all interchangeable. And I'm glad you're here because I have a very simple but very specific way that I want you to practice these. If you follow this approach to learning and practicing the major scale guitar patterns, you will have a much easier time applying them to real music, to seeing where you are on the fretboard, and knowing where you are in a key. I'm Jared from soundguitarlessons.com. On this channel, I talk a lot about music theory and mapping out the fretboard. And in fact, I'm pausing right now a big music theory guitar chord series that I've been doing for a while to start a new series on how to map out and practice a bunch of different scale types on the guitar. So many guitarists, even great sounding experienced guitarists, haven't fully mapped out and worked out their major scale guitar patterns all over the guitar. Well, it doesn't take much and the benefits are so huge. I wanna give you a simple way to work on them once and for all. This exact way I'm gonna show you, I still work on practicing scales this way all the time. So even if you think you know this stuff, you might wanna check out how I recommend practicing it. Let's dive in here. These are the five major scale guitar patterns that we wanna know like the back of our hand. There are many other ways to play scales and map out scales on the guitar, but at the very least, we want to be comfortable with these five particular scale shapes. This is not a lesson on the caged system, but I am going to use that system to label these scale forms. All five of the patterns here are all written with the root as C. So they're all written as C major scales, but you can move them around to play in any key. If you just line up that root note with another note, whatever note that is, that is the root of the new scale, that is the new key that you're playing in. So to label these, we're gonna label that first one, the A form. The next one, we're gonna label the G form. The next one, we are going to label the E form. The following one, we're gonna label the D form, and the last one is gonna be called C form. We're using this labeling system because there's not really an inherent first scale form, first scale pattern out of these five. They do always go in the same order, but there's not a, a first one. So we can't really justify calling them pattern one, pattern two, pattern three, because which one is number one? If you change the key, they all change around whatever one is further to the left of the neck will change depending on the key that you're in. You will see them sometimes labeled as pattern one, pattern two, pattern three, but I don't like that as much as labeling them with the letter names of the scale of the uh, cage system. The logic of this labeling system is that if you create a triad off of the root of any of the scale forms, you can get a triad chord shape that is either the C chord shape or the A chord shape or G or E or D. Okay, enough about all that. Let's talk about how to specifically practice these. When playing in scale positions, we have somewhat of a unique challenge. The lowest note of each of these scale positions, none of them have the root as the lowest note, and only one of them has the root as the highest note. For most instruments that don't play in positions like this, it wouldn't make any sense at all to randomly play a scale without having the root of that scale be the first note and the last note, or the lowest note and the highest note that you're playing, unless you're practicing modes or working on a particular exercise like scale patterns, which I'll talk about more in a little bit. Yet on the guitar, we often will practice these scale patterns just as these scale shapes up and down and up and down, hoping that we can just apply it to real music, but without hearing and targeting specifically where the root is of the scale. So targeting the root in a specific way is the secret to how we're gonna practice all of our scales in this series that I'm doing on mapping out a bunch of scale types. This exercise that we're about to do for a long time, I've just been calling it the root to root method or the root to root exercise. And it really is the secret to playing the scale in the way that we are intending it to sound, to really knowing exactly where the roots are in all of the positions. And then therefore, we can use the same physical scale form to actually play other types of scales as well. This is how we can see the scale forms in a musical context and not just be playing something physical without listening to it. For example, these five major scale patterns, they are the exact same physical scale forms as the natural minor scale forms. That's what I'm gonna do a video on next. But if they're both, well, when is it one and when is it the other? How do we tell the difference? It's all about how we play them, what we emphasize, specifically what we are calling and treating as the root. So here are the rules to practicing scales with the root to root method. Following these guidelines makes all the difference in the world. Number one, start on the lowest root of the scale form. Number two, 
play the entire scale form. Rule number three, when you land on a root, play it a second time and then keep going the direction that you were headed. Number four, don't repeat any other notes that are not the root. So don't repeat the notes that are on the outside of the scale forms, the highest note and the lowest note, unless those notes happen to be a root. And then lastly, number five, we want to end on the same root that we started on after playing the whole scale form. So if we're descending to that final root, if there are notes below it, you need to go past that root, play everything underneath it, and then come back around to land on that same root that you started on. That's it, that's how it goes. Now I'm just gonna demonstrate exactly that through all five of these major scale guitar patterns, and this is exactly how I want you to be able to do it. That's a really important first step to learning these scale forms and really hearing them as they are intended to be. Once you have that down, here are the next steps to start working on and start taking to continue to master these scale forms. Work on doing that same thing, playing all five scale patterns in as many keys as possible, in all 12 keys if possible. The scale forms are gonna stay the exact same and they're gonna stay in the same order, but they're gonna move around where that root note is gonna line up with a different note. That's gonna be the different key that you're playing in. The second thing is to be able to play them with melodic patterns. Any kind of melodic patterns where you're breaking up the notes into a uh, sequence, a linear pattern, is fantastic and really necessary for truly understanding the scales in a way where we can have them ready to play and not have them just sound like scales. And I have a free PDF about that that I'll talk about at the end. But if we do a melodic thirds pattern, which is one of the go-to first kind of patterns to work on, if I do that with this first scale form, I'm gonna play a note and go uh, skip a note and then back one and skip a note, and do that through the scale form. working on melodic patterns, you don't have to do the root to root thing. You don't have to think about that. The root to root is totally its own exercise. We already did that. That's how we can internalize where the root is and hearing it that way. Melodic patterns are much more about getting um, physical habits and aural habits. So we're hearing how the scale can be broken up in a way that is not just purely scalar. And the third thing to do as you're working on this is just be able to do them with a metronome at, at a steady pace in time. This just ensures that we actually have it down and there's not hesitation between notes. And that's really important, obviously, for playing real music that's unfolding in time and doesn't really let you wait to get things right. A couple other things just to take into consideration. One, um, try to be alternate picking if you're using a pick that's down up alternate picking or alternating between two, two fingers if you are using finger style. Another thing that you might wanna focus on sometimes is just be careful about buzzes and or playing too aggressively that might make a rattling sound or cause more buzzes. So watch out for that and just kind of your overall tone. And then the third thing is trying to play in a legato connected way where we're trying to uh, eliminate gaps between notes that don't need to be there, trying to connect those notes as much as possible. If you can map out the five major scale guitar patterns in this way and get them down, you will be able to learn music faster, remember it longer, um, create melodies easier, avoid getting lost on the fretboard, and you'll start to see how nearly every single thing we ever play relates back to major scale structures. Now, everything I said here applies to all other scale types. So in my next several videos, I'm going to show examples of mapping out and working on in the same way several other scales so we're not just only working on major. This will include the natural minor scale, the major pentatonic scale, the minor pentatonic scale, the minor blues scale, and the major blues scale. 
If you want to get a few scale exercise written out for you with notation and tab, grab my free PDF of the top three pentatonic scale guitar patterns for learning how to improvise and play solos more melodically and tastefully. Two of the patterns on that sheet can be applied to any scale type and not just pentatonic scales. Just go to soundguitarlessons.com slash three patterns. That's number three patterns or use the link in the description. It's a simple little sheet of tab and notation of three exercises that can make all the difference in making solos sound less like scales and more like melodies. That's it for this lesson. Make sure you're subscribed and hit the bell. Happy practicing. Thanks for watching. Take care.